many more helpings on the way as we consider our history on Thanksgiving Day and the understanding on how using Indian mascots truly impacts Native American tribes. The Washington Redskins. These days it sounds shocking when you hear someone say that, doesn't it? Well, the Washington football team had that name before they were the Washington football team. It dates back to the early 1930s when they were the Boston Redskins. After decades of complaints and in the rise of racial awareness this summer, the team decided to move on from that name. But as former NFL player Jim Warren, a Lakota tribal member who's now a native activist, wants us all to understand, no longer using nicknames that indigenous people find offensive and dropping the use of their likeness as mascots is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to understanding the plight of Native Americans today. I never did play for a team with a Native mascot, but I played against teams with Native mascots. So obviously I was a target of people that wanted to say things like scalp the Indian or cut your hair. When we hear that term red skin, we know that it's a term of our pelts, our scalps, that were bounties that were paid to bounty hunters. This negative imagery is getting most of the press, yet there's deeper issues in Indian country. We learn a lot about genocide in other countries, but we don't learn about the genocide that happened here. Back in 1890, the 7th Cavalry really wanted to get us back for Custer's Last Stand. When you look at the Wounded Knee grave site, my family is number 18 on that list of families that perished that day. Being an American citizen, many of us don't have that experience of visiting a mass grave, of feeling that trauma from many generations ago. Pine Ridge, my home reservation, is the poorest county in the United States. So the average family income is under $10,000 per year. Unfortunately, Indian country has the highest rate of COVID-19 in the world. And when I go home and I hear the people that are passing away just because they can't keep themselves warm, that's something that's very challenging. When you think of Paha Sapa, which means Black Hills, that's our sacred land. U.S. policy saw that our culture, our ceremonies were savage and heathen. So we could have been singing a song for happy birthday or a wedding, and they saw it as war drums. Black Elk said it would take seven generations to heal our circle after wounded knee. So as we gather on this special holiday, let's give thanks for inclusion. Let's give thanks for culture. Let's give thanks for who we are as two-leggeds. Indeed, let's give thanks for how far we've come while also being thankful for the wisdom to recognize there's much more ground we need to cover. As Warren told us, simply dropping mascot nicknames and thinking the problem is solved is akin to no longer doing blackface and believing that solves racism.